Hello everybody, thank you very much for attending today. Um, this is obviously the LCG webinar on support and resistance. Um, so it's a very busy week in markets. Um, uh, we've got the Bank of England looking set to raise rates for the first time in over a decade tomorrow and the pound's rallying. Um, seeing the, uh, the, the UK 100 is underperforming other equity indices, it's all quite interesting. Um, but obviously we're not going to talk about that now, but hopefully what we learn today is of some use in making, uh, in, in trading these very active and um, interesting markets. Um, so I'm, not, I'm going to remove myself from proceedings um, so that we can concentrate on the, the screen. Um, well, the other thing I wanted to quickly ask was that um, before uh, before we get yeah before we get started or just throughout, um, I think towards the end we're going to just have a look at some live markets and see how we can interpret the support and resistance. So if anyone has any particular market they want me to concentrate on um, at the end, um, Euro dollar, the FTSE 100, uh, Wall Street, some more abstract exotic currency pair. Um, hopefully we can apply some of these support and resistance ideas to those markets. Obviously it's going to be a bit of a kind of look back for the most part, but hopefully we can make some deducements about what's going forward as well. Uh, so we'll the aim to be doing that at the end. Um, so going out a bit of a limb, uh, not pre-planning this, but hoping you can provide me some markets to, to look into. <clears throat> right, so I'm assuming you've all read the, the risk warning at this stage. So this, uh, this webinar, how to use support and resistance. So the topics we're going to cover, what is support and resistance first off, um, where to draw it, why does it work, um, two simple ways to use it, um, to really break down what the kind of idea of it is, um, some rules to remember when you're looking at support and resistance, um, combining support and resistance with uh, trends, <coughs> Let's close my email down there, um, and um, some just example trades, as I mentioned at the end. So yeah, any uh, any markets you want to need to have a look at, I probably won't be able to cover all suggestions, but I'll try and um, pick some. <clears throat> so how should we think about uh, support and resistance? What is it? Um, for for me, it's a price level that can interrupt the current price trend. So I've used the word interrupt because I think that interruption can either be very short-lived or it can be uh, more of a long-term impact. Uh, so there's lots of factors that affect which of one of those it's going to be. Um, so I think that the, the key point here is to not to think of support being a bottom and resistance being a top, but just price levels um, above and below the current market price uh, that, could pour, uh, that could cause the current trend uh, to be interrupted. <clears throat> so resistance is the level that was previously created in a rise, uh, is a level that was previously caused a rising price to turn lower, and support is a level that previously caused a falling price to turn higher. So basically, a sort of up swing and a, and a down swing in the market when the price returns to those swing levels, then uh, they are potential support and resistance. Uh, <coughs> resistance is always above the current market price. A support is always below the current market price. So if you're trying to, if you're trying to think about uh, which is which, especially when you're first getting into this, um, think about it in terms of it's meaning in a, in, a, in a rising market, that's where the terms come from, because obviously when you're talking about stock markets over the long haul, normally stock markets are rising, you think of a rising market. So support is something that supports the price going higher, so if the price comes down, hits the support and keeps going higher again, obviously it's supported those higher prices. Uh, resistance resists the price going higher, you know, the price of the market's rising, um, hits that level uh, and turns lower, has obviously resisted those higher prices. <clears throat> uh, some sort of very simplistic examples here about typically how you would draw those support and resistance levels. 
um, support drawn at the previous lows in the price and resistance is drawn at previous highs in the price. So we're trying to keep our de definition quite narrow here. There are other there are other factors on the price chart that can contribute towards the price turning lower. So, for example, a Fibonacci level or um, a round number. Uh, things like that can also turn the price lower. And when used in conjunction with support and resistance, that's very powerful. But we're just concentrating on these kind of uh, highs and lows uh, when we're defining our support and resistance. I should have mentioned, of course, that at any point, if you have any questions, um, please yeah, feel free to, to let me know. <clears throat> so why does, it, why does this work? It's just interesting to know what you're dealing with. I mean, for me, I have to understand why it's working in order to actually practice it. You know, a lot of people just tell you support's at the lows, you know, uh, resistance at the highs, just do it. But if you don't really believe it, why it should work, then it makes it hard to put it into practice. So markets do remember those old highs and lows uh, because you see it many times when you look through your charts and we're going to have a look in just a moment. You know, when the price returned to a level that previously caused a bounce, um, it, it, it quite often bounces again at that just that exact same level. But if you think about the buyers and sellers that are actually participating in the market and their psychology, then actually this makes a fair bit of sense. <clears throat> so imagine the market turned lower from a price level, call it 100. So market was rising hit 100 and turn lower again, say it dropped to 80. Then it, ra it rallies up from 80, gets to 100 again. That, that would be a resistance level, potentially. So imagine the buyers in that scenario. Buyers who were buying on that rise up to 100 have been spooked by the fact that the market dropped down to 80. So now that it's rallying back up to 100 again, they're thinking actually, I'm going to sell, you know, I, um, I, I don't want to risk the market turning lower again. I managed to hold on for that decline. The market's back where it was when it started that drop, so I'm going to sell. So, they, so those buyers become sellers. And then sellers um, who, for example, short sellers, particularly when in, um, you know, in Forex and commodities markets where there's often equal, there's always equal buyers and sellers, but there's, there's, there's active short sellers in the market. Sellers who missed out on that turn lower, uh, so when the market dropped to 100, dropped 20 points down to 80, they thought, oh man, I wanted to, I was looking to sell it, but it didn't quite get to my level, but now it bounces back up to 100 again, okay, the, well, the opportunity's presented itself to sell again. So then new sellers enter the market as well. So the, all those players in the market have some sort of psychological incentive to actually enter the market or change their position at that level. <clears throat> And it's the same thing for support, just reversed, um, you know, uh, drop down to that 80 level. Uh, and obviously, uh, at that point, uh, sellers have been spooked, uh, buyers looking to jump in on the, um, the new opportunity to buy at a lower level. So it's basically just a motion taking place at these price levels. Of course, there's always fundamental factors going on in the market, but why do these particular price levels work when people are... Um, cutting across or, or, or dumping their fundamental opinions, or it's the fear of loss and it's the, the fear of missing out. <clears throat> so really when you're looking at support and resistance, there's, there's two very simplistically put ways of, 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 of making use of it in terms of a uh, trade entry point. So the first one being the bounce. So if we take the example of the support here, this is the price coming down, hits the support level. Now this is the, uh, these entry and exit points are one way of doing it, they're not the only. You could, for example, just have your order resting down at the support and enter right at the support level. The, these entry and exit points assume that you're waiting for some confirmation that the support has worked and you enter at a slightly higher level and put your exit uh, down below that newly created support. So, same thing for resistance. Here's the, here's the price coming up, hits that resistance level, uh, and then once you feel that that resistance is in place, you enter the market and put your, your stop 
uh, to exit the market above that resistance level. And we're not going to go into massive detail here, but the uh, market also works in terms of horizontal, uh, so uh, diagonal, more like um, changing over time support and resistance in the form of trend lines. So trend lines can work in a very similar way to this horizontal support and resistance that we're, that we're talking today. A lot of people will refer to trend lines as a dynamic support and resistance. So the alternative to that bounce is the breakout. So here we have this support and resistance in mind as an important price level, but we're not looking for it to hold. We're, we've determined it's, it's important, but we're actually waiting for our trigger to enter the market is that this level is breaking. So you'll see things like this, um, you know, this top example here where it's, the market's dropping through our support level in the instance of, for example, a, a pattern in the market like we've, we've seen in Euro dollar recently, we've seen what looks a bit like a head and shoulders pattern and we've seen it break through the neckline of that pattern. Uh, the neckline is the support, so we're waiting for the price to jump through the support before we decided to start selling the market. And so in, in the way they've structured this, again, you could, um, you could just wait for the price to break right through the level or you could wait for it to move past the market or you can wait for the price to return to the su broken support you know once the kind of momentum fades of the break oftentimes it will drift back to the support and you can enter the market there we'll talk about that a bit more in a second the fact that um, old support becomes resistance old resistance becomes support same here with the the resistance you know you've eyed up your resistance level <clears throat> this is a an old price high as we discussed in the other slide um, the market doesn't roll over from it, it breaks through it <clears throat> and we determine that to be significant uh, as in the breaking of these levels tells us that the market is is reversing or accelerating through those, those significant price levels. <clears throat> so some rules to remember here. Now the first and second points they may seem a bit um, almost uh, like they can't both be true at the same time, but they actually they actually are. Um, so the more tests a price level has had, the more significant it is. So when I'm talking about a test, I'm just saying that a market, you know, in our example where the market rallied up to 100, say it dropped down to 80, rallied up to 100 again, dropped to 70, rallied up to 100 again, dropped, and it keeps dropping from 100. All of those are tests of the 100 level. And so the more of those you get, the more significant it is because the more people are going to be noticing that, um, that every time the market gets to 100, it can't get through it. Um, we had it on the FTSE 100 over a long time uh, at the 6900 level. Um, so it became a really significant level, but eventually it had to break. And so that's the point for number two, is that the more tests the price level has had, the more the market keeps trying to get up there, okay, it's failed multiple times in the past, but it's showing determination to get up there and eventually um, it's going to break. So fitting in with that idea that actually um, fresh support and resistance levels have a better chance to holding. So say, <clears throat> say we break through um, a resistance and then the market returns back down to that resistance and it's a new support. Uh, that that's new support has a better chance of holding than if it already fell to that support, rallied again, then came down to that support set for a second time, then actually that has slightly less chance of holding than on that first fresh test of the level. And as with most technical indicators, um, most times that we're interpreting charts, the higher time frames have the most significance just because more people are looking at them. Really. So some people are long-term investors, just look at the long-term charts. Some people are short-term traders, but they'll look at the long-term charts for direction, um, for the general sense of things, for the bigger levels. So everyone's kind of aware of these bigger levels, only the short-term traders are aware of the, the smaller levels. And obviously, when you get down to the really short time frames, one five-minute charts, only a select uh, population of the the market is looking at those very small levels, so they they just aren't as significant and tend to tend to break more. It just doesn't work as often, and that's the general rule: of short term trading. You get more opportunities, but the the techniques that you're using aren't as typically as reliable. 
<clears throat> uh, and then as we mentioned, that point 0.5, when broken, resistance becomes support, and when broken, support becomes resistance. Uh, so that becomes key when you're looking at breakouts and retests of the level for entry points. Now, if we are thinking about that point 0.5 in a bit more detail, it becomes quite critical when you're looking at the market in terms of um, a trend and what's happening and where you should be uh, timing your entries. Of course, these, this is one of these things that doesn't always work. Support and resistance don't always work as they perfectly should. Um, but there is certainly a tendency there. And so that we want to try and follow those tendencies to give ourselves an edge in the market, help the probabilities of our trades being successful, um, move beyond that 50-50 coin flip that if we're not following any rules. Um, if resistance has broken, so we, you know, there's a big 100 level, it's stopped the price moving lower several times, do you want to be a buyer or a seller? So I'm guessing most of you know the answer to that, right? You want to be a buyer, right? That, that's the idea, the resistance has broken. We're now into a new territory where uh, sellers have lost control of that level, buyers have taken over. Now we want to be a buyer. So that's the first question answered. Um, we watch side of the market do we want to be in when we see these levels break? If a support breaks, do we want to be a buyer or seller? We want to be a seller, right? <clears throat> if the resistance is broken, do you want to buy at the old support? Or secondary to that, if the resistance is broken, do you want to buy at the new support caused by that broken resistance? So, say in our example, market rallied up to 100, it fell back again to, to 80 on that first attempt, it rallied up to 100 and went through to 110. Then the market started falling back. Do you want your entry level to take advantage of this breakout? Do you want it at 100 or do you want it at 80? The market's probably not going to get back to 80. We're in a new uh, environment now where the market's taken out that key level. We're potentially moving into new uptrending environment. Um, it's probably not going to get to 80, so don't start looking at support at old lows when you see a big resistance being taken out because the market's never going to get down there. Uh, you need to participate in the new changing environment. And so really you want uh, your entry point at that 100 level. That's the support now, the old support is old. This is the new support. Now, of course, there are, level, there are going to be times when the market uh, does drop down to the old support and hold and rally from there. Like I said, it's not perfect, but that's the idea behind that. And so, this is just a quick kind of pre-plan example I had. It's fairly random, actually. It's the it's the, the FTSE 350 basic resource sector, but it just seemed to give quite a good example. I wanted to quickly run through this. So, <clears throat> say we're in this initial environment. So, and it's good as well because it it shows that um, it kind of shows the um, changing nature of support and resistance through a, a range and a trend, but it also shows that it's not perfect. So, say we're in this beginning environment where we've got this resistance level through here. Uh, we've come up for the first test, failed, came down, came up for the next test, failed again, dropped through the support and came away down towards this support area but didn't actually get to the support. So, you know, that's going to be the kind of painful thing that I'm sure you guys have experienced before when the market within a range bound environment doesn't quite get to the support level. Already there's some aggressive buyers coming in, pushing the market up. Eventually we get that break and we come back down but we actually do, we get a bit of a kind of reversal looking candlestick pattern, which is a subject for another day, uh, but it's not the most solid looking break, and we drop down through, and so it actually drops through the old resistance, but nowhere near does it get down to the old, old support down here. In fact, it's just this little spike high that seems to act as support, and the market rallies up through the old resistance and up to a, a new level of resistance, uh, which actually happens to correspond to this high back over here. <coughs> And so um, <clears throat> the point I'm making with this, with this particular environment is that, look, here's the old support down here after this break. Do we want our buy order down here? No, we want our buy orders close to the old high. That's now the support. 
that was the resistance, now it's the support, the mark, obviously it's not perfect, we get a little wick of a candlestick down here in today, but uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, I can't remember, to be honest, I can't remember if this was a week or a daily chart, this is probably a weekly chart actually, um, let's see, if I, um, but anyway, whatever the period is, it uh, holds for the period and rallies up through the old resistance and in fact holds that resistance as support again and here's one of those instances where we rally up, take that old high out but then we fall back, snipe, snipe through these old lows here but basically find support at the low instead of the high because you see we only just got through the old high and then we formed a bit of a kind of uncertain looking bit of price action there and then the market sold off but eventually the buyers came back in back at that old level again which was resistance, was support and with support again. And we ra once we'd managed to sustain those lows, the buyers took control again. We rallied re really up high, and the market got really kind of overzealous at this point. We're looking pretty pretty stretched. Market comes down to this kind of small temporary high here, attempts to bounce, but actually puts in a lower low, and the market rolls over. And suddenly we're in range trading mode again. <clears throat> so we've hit this support. Was it one, two, three times now? market rallies up, hits the resistance, we're no longer in the, here we're in a range, here we're in a trend, as defined by how support and resistance is acting, now we're back into a range again, because it, with the high is held, the lows are holding, we're not rallying off old resistance levels like we'd expected. If we drop down to here, and the market had start pushing up again, we'd still be in an uptrend because it, this resistance would be the support. But the, the resistance didn't work as the support. The old support worked as the support. And then we, then we had a good chance, especially after this long tail on this candlestick, that this was going to be a high at least for the time being. So I hope that kind of um, works. <clears throat> I hope that makes sense in terms of how you can actually just purely use support and resistance in terms of determining the environment and where... Uh, you know, the, the fact that we're in a, a sideways trend or an uptrend <coughs> for uh, determining whereabouts you want to be looking for your, for your entries and exits in the market. <coughs> now, much along these lines, um, we're going to try and uh, have a look at some charts in the LCG Trader, and uh, we're going to uh, hopefully, in, along, the, along the lines of the analysis, assess the trends and how you'd manage your risk in the different scenarios. <clears throat> uh, just a, well, a quick question from David. You're referring to that chart we're just looking at, I think, right? <clears throat> so, I guess one of the considerations here is that you know, uh, obviously hindsight is um, a beautiful thing. We can look at the fact that this high got barely nudged out, uh, and so, in, you know, in an ideal world with all the information present to us, <clears throat> we may have thought that maybe the market's losing momentum when it only just got above that old high and started rolling over, and maybe we'd move our stop higher, but ultimately if our stop was below this low, <clears throat> we'd have been stopped out, stopped out on this um, on this downtrend, you know, if we'd been looking to buy at the old high um, and the market rolled over past it, you know, and our stop was below the old low, uh, we'd have been stopped out. But the idea is to keep, you know, a fresh mind on what's happening, not get spooked. So maybe even <clears throat> you'd be up here and you may maybe even think, well, okay, maybe this is into a range environment and you'd be looking for some signs of weakness up at the old resistance. But, so either you have your trade right at the resistance level and actually that gets stopped out as well because we rally straight through it, or you just don't get the signs of uh, weakness that you're looking for and you think, okay, that's actually confirmation to me that we've closed right at the resistance, that actually the market's looking strong again, and then you try to re-enter the trade on a breakout or uh, such like. So a part of this is that um, you, know, you, can't, uh, you can't capture every little swing in the trend and there are going to be times when it catches you out, but um, as long as you're following what's happening and you're on the right side of the market, you're going to capture some proportion of this rising trend here. Um, maybe one or two get stopped you out, but you know you're going to 
have an idea what's going on. And obviously, you know, we're not in this discussion talking about other indicators which could maybe act as a warning signal to you alongside support and resistance to maybe sl slightly put the odds in your favor as to which of these trades you take and you don't using purely support and resistance. Um, and Simon, you were just asking about um, when you say the s uh, second and third lines, one as in like one, two, three. <clears throat> you're not talking about that, are you? Oh, from the top. So, is in like here? Mm -hmm. uh, so, what you mean? Yeah, so you're talking about kind of like here, right? These two lows over here. Uh, you, it depends, it's sort of, so my, my, I guess my definition perhaps, um, so yeah, so as well as I was, I was referring to this, um, this high over here, which certainly could be a resistance, um, so in terms of that, look, that, you know, that was the one where um, we only nudged higher and rolled over, so obviously <clears throat> that was one. If you'd just been holding on to a rally through this breakout and not considered this a retest and an entry point, you've just been holding on, uh, maybe a stop still below this low over here and you can ride out this. So again, it depends on risk management. Um, in, I guess in an ideal scenario, you'd have been long here, you'd re-entered long here, and so you're already long twice. Uh, so, depending on your risk management, again, either you've taken profit or in an ideal world, and it's something I, I still struggle to do, is just to ride the trend as much as you can. Ideally, you're long two positions, and then maybe you get to this little area here, and you think, oh, okay, I'll go long again, double up, on, uh, you know, triple up on our third position, because the market's had another breakout. That third position doesn't work out, but you're still good on your, on your first two positions, and then you ride through, and you're good for that, for that next breakout and maybe you re-enter your third position or you just keep your second on. Again, there's, that's the kind of risk management discussion, which I guess I'm already getting into um, before we get to the LCG trader, um, which, which definitely makes a difference. You know? So this is the kind of core analysis of the prices, but then how do you manage your position according to them? Uh, it certainly makes a huge difference on what you come away with from, from the trend. So we had a few different requests. Let's see what I can get through to here. Um, let's start from the top. So got a pretty simple layout here. Um, I, I could, you know, I could do this on a on a very short term basis, but typically, um, what you see is, uh, as I said there the support and resistance levels uh, have a bit more clarity on the longer term chart. So um, if you, if anyone who requested one of these markets wanted to look on a short term basis, just yeah, give me a nod what, what time frame you want me to look at and, um, and we'll try and go through that on a kind of support and resistance basis over the last few periods. So I'm hoping what I can also do here is give you a little feel as to kind of how I, uh, just from a blank chart, lay out my support and resistance levels. Uh, one w one thing that I didn't um, that I'm hoping to also address through these charts as well is just that th one of the big temptations is just to draw every single support and resistance level on your chart. And I actually see a lot of my like professional colleagues doing this, where they they'll post a chart online. There'll be like ten support and resistance levels on there, you know, probably with three different indicators on there as well. And the chart's just way too busy. What you really want is the support and resistance that is immediately useful to you in terms of placing a trade. Um, you don't, you're not interested in any other support and resistance levels 
sort of miles away from the market, why would you be? They're, they're not relevant for the time being. They're, they're relevant maybe as a very long-term target, if that's your inclination, but uh, they're, not in, they're not relevant for your, for your entry. You know, the, 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 the levels, you just want the levels that are going to be important for your entry and, and your exit, but you don't want the other levels. So let's go, what was the first one that was requested here? Okay, uh, start with dollar yen. I've actually been watching dollar yen quite closely myself recently. Um, so so for me, what I'll what I'll typically do, uh, maybe we can help ourselves here by uh, do, 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 viewing options, remove the bid and the ask. So <clears throat> what I'll typically do is start uh, from a weekly basis and just look at the nearest. So as the price is rising here, you know, naturally we're looking for resistance to to stop that rise. So we look to the left. And it's pretty clear cut in, whoa, that's a bit of a mad looking uh, line. So clearly we see right now that actually there's a pretty hefty hefty resistance at uh, 114. Now I've put that bit randomly on the chart. Some people will refer to, uh, so this is, this is just something, this is something that's kind of my personal preference, it just makes intuitive sense to me, is that a lot of people refer to, oh, resistance 114.353, that's the resistance level. I mean, you know, big institutions aren't going to be looking at 114.353. They're going to be looking at 114 as a round number, and they're going to be looking at 114.5. So in this instance, it's kind of, um, you know, choose the one you think makes most sense. For me, it's 114.5. That's the level that's really resisting prices at the moment. And then you just go the next level up, and so you know if we're looking for a breakout here, then actually again look where this level falls. Um, I, you know again I'm drawing a bit roughly here, but I'll just I'll just modify it down to 115.5. <clears throat> so that's on a longer term basis. And then on this weekly swing here, you can see that we've got a support down here. Now there is support down here. And I could draw that in, but at the moment we're in a rising market. Um, until we break 111, which you know maybe you could call that 112, 115 might be a bit low. Until we break 112, I don't have too much interest in these levels down here. Look, you know the market's rising. To me, it's looking, it's edging towards a breakout. So I'll start with that weekly basis. Uh, but also, what are we what are we kind of determining at this point from the market, from the market structure on a weekly basis? Well, we're basically in a range, right? So we're looking for the environment to change on a weekly basis. At the moment, um, you'd assume that probably markets are going the, the price is going to roll over from resistance, and it it has once. Now the market's moving higher again, and I think from the structure on the daily chart. It, you know, it, it's looking quite promising for the market to continue moving higher. So, so there are higher levels. We're already obviously up here at this point. Now, for me, what it looks like is happening at the moment on dollar yen is that this was our. That's drawing me a completely different coloured line. I don't know if that's because I'm on a different time chart, a uh, different time frame. But this was basically the resistance. So you can even go so far as to say it was the highs and lows on the daily chart. There was there actually, and some people do play it like that. You can actually draw the resistance at the highs and lows, or indeed, um, as I mentioned to you before, guess which level it is really that the market's reacting to. Well, it's the round number, right? That's where the big institutions make them make their moves. <clears throat> So actually, we had various false breaks through the 113 round level, came back down, retested 112, had a little false break through it, held that old low there. Um, so that's a sign of strength. 
that we had a false break through the level, but actually we held this low here. So market's coming down. Um, just going back a little for a moment here. Um, we were in a kind of ranging environment here, right? You could um, call that the last high. Broke through. Now the dynamic has changed. Rallied up. Got a pull back here. Rallied up again. That became the support. <clears throat> but we managed to hold it. Rallied up. Found resistance at the old round number again. And the resistance there pulled back. But what didn't pull back to the support. Rallied up found uh, support here at the old resistance and now we're rallying up again. So now we're back up at the resistance. It, it looks to me, uh, you know, of course we can get a double top and roll over. That's distinctly possible. And we do have the Fed meeting later today. So, you know, so always a chance for volatility. Um, we're at a high going into a Fed meeting. So um, probably what the Fed do and say is going to determine whether this level breaks or holds. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'll try. I won't try and linger too much on uh, uh, on each one. Um, so there's a quest for Sterling. Do I already have that much? No. Um, so obviously got this detail. I would always suggest if no one does this already in the LCG, so just trade and save your own simple template. <coughs> What I thought I could give you a little demonstration here, if I remove it and ask, and then I could actually go and save that as a template. Save. Yeah. So hopefully we won't see those bid and ask on the next ones. Okay. Uh, again, starting with a kind of weekly basis. <coughs> um, you know, this is kind of um, just when, as soon as I draw this list line in, you'll see kind of see why I've been positive on the pound for a while here is that um, <clears throat> we had our resistance. This was a range trading environment as we were trying to find a bottom, potentially rolling over to new lows. But actually we didn't. We broke up through the we broke up through the resistance, came back down. You know, these levels aren't perfect. We came back down through the level, we chopped around for a, a few weeks. You could you you know with you could have used obviously this level down here. We didn't quite get down to that. Well, I suppose we kind of did. Uh, so this swing point here actually did end up saving the market. But basically, we had the break. Did we go all the way back down to the support? No, we actually used the old resistance or thereabouts as the support and rallied up again. We did pause at the old resistance. We had a bit of a breakthrough. We did then, because it was a bit of a, a mingled not too convincing break. <coughs> Once we were back down through that resistance again, we actually kind of came down to uh, to test a, a support. But the market was still looking strong, and so really it was actually that same level again, that same resistance that actually eventually a bit uh, was um, the level that held for yet another occasion, basically the sort of 128-ish. The market rallied up from there, and now we're just in the business of this resistance here, where we had the. Um, <clears throat> of course, you can use this as a as a level, but this was just a bit of a muddled break of this level. So actually, we got the muddled break. The finally the break, and now we've been holding the sort of one thirty fifty, or one thirty round level. And at the moment. <clears throat> Support, uh, you know, the the old resistance is holding a support. <coughs> to me, that's characteristic of a um, of a strong looking market. So even when we had this drastic decline, and we held the level, I was still feeling, uh, you know, I was, I was appreciating that we we're in a moment of weakness. It probably wasn't a great time for short term buying trades in the pound, but I was still generally feeling uh, confident. And then, of course, you you know, you add in some other techniques. Um, you know, in this case, a good one is trend lines. Trend lines don't always work, but you add in a trend line here, um, and you can actually add another reason, you know, why to remain confident um, on the pound on a kind of support and resistance basis. So then you drop down to 
the daily chart and you've got a feeling as to where the market's been moving um, and <clears throat> obviously at this point we, we're having that breakout but the market quickly rolled over from there um, so it was certainly a concern when we when we came down and, and took out you see how the market tried to sort of hold that level but it rolled over but it basically didn't get it didn't get all the way down to the support and, and rallied up again and now we're in a position where this sort of resistance um, is, is holding so maybe call that a bit of a spike high use that high or even just use that that high there that's what we're trying to test the sort of 133 level basically if I if I drop the number down <clears throat> you can see that's what we're trying to break through at the moment having held the support so I've kind of fudged around the last probably should have left the long-term levels on to kind of prove this point but you can see how um, the supports holding at the moment now we're retesting the, the resistance um, you know these are all kind of foundation levels for for the trading Are you guys still uh, all all right to, to hear me? I had someone drop out there saying they couldn't hear. Um, I'm assuming everyone else is okay. Mm. So we have quite a few requests um, coming through from David, especially on the pound. Um, let's have a look at um, pound CAD is an interesting one that maybe not everyone will be thinking to look at. Let's have a look at that. <clears throat> ah, there we go, no bid nast this time. So start with our weekly basis. <clears throat> um, so obviously, what are, what's our immediate concern? Well, the market's rising. You know, where are the next uh, support and resistance levels? I'll go. I'll go very simple from a, a weekly basis, and then we'll try and go into the daily chart to get a bit more of a feeling as to um, where the other levels might be. But <clears throat> you can see these two levels above the market look fairly pertinent. And then you could say something like these levels right here, pretty much 159. And what are we looking at here? One seventy-five, really, <laughs> and one seventy-eight fifty, really. I would say <laughs> are kind of the um, the main kind of support and resistance levels to keep in mind. But you know, based on this, <clears throat> based on something on this weekly chart, you know, what kind of environment are we in? Well, I would say during this, you know, very simplistically during this period of time we were downtrending. Uh, during this period of time, we're not putting in lower lows, we're not putting higher highs, actually the support is being respected and for the time being, the resistance thereabouts, uh, we tried to break through but failed, failed on the retest, dropped down again, so actually this 175 thereabouts is, is holding for the time being. Um, so I'd be getting pretty interested 175 breaks. For me, 175 breaks, it gives, it me, it gives me a pretty good feeling that actually 178.50 is probably going to break too. But we're in a range-bound basis on the weekly chart, drop down to the, the daily chart. So in this instance, we're obviously looking back with the benefit of time. The market's falling, falling, falling. So you're aware it's a kind of downtrend. But this big long-term level comes in um, as a reminder. You know, it's that level there. You know, obviously, and this level does pretty much work. I think you kind of missed the lows of that one, of 157. If you're using this kind of price zone as a support, then you're, you're kind of all right. <clears throat> and then, so you're watching this, you see some strong price action, um, and then you start drawing in your levels uh, on a kind of daily basis, and you can see level holds. Uh, There's the first rally off the low, becomes a little resistance there. We break up, come back, retest that. The resistance hold already. There's a bit of strength, signs of strength in the market because it's the resistance 
turned into support which is holding not the old support you know actually people are buying in at the, you know there was a breakout on that short term basis market returns to that level people are buying in again so it's that resistance has become support you get a rally up through this resistance here and then by this point the market's really taking off uh, we get a rally through this resistance too that's kind of a slightly more significant one market takes off we hit this resistance over here, market pulls back, few test this level a few times, so you know obviously in this instance if we were getting really aggressive, um, you know, and we were interpreting maybe this as a peak and, then, and that as a breakout, we came back to that level there but if we actually came back down to this this level here. So if you've got a bit aggressive with the with a with the buy in here, you know if the market had just really run pretty far high. So you're getting a bit aggressive there. That one didn't work out. But if you're looking for a return to the old main resistance area as support, there's the support turn resistance. It hasn't come back down to the lows, right? And then we've got to have a breakout here. We've had a break of this level, which this level here is basically this level you know we've had a few false attempts here the market rolled over finally we do take it out and then actually that little peak works as the pullback area we don't come back to support we come back to the old resistance of support and we're off again so um, we're, we're in the context of a weekly range but we're rallying um, on on this kind of daily basis and everything's working out so you know where the market to pull back again to basically what is actually a nice, in this case, 6995, is that the resistance? No, is 0.7, yes. If the market pulls back to 1.7, um, if the current price structure holds, <coughs> um, that should be the support, not 168, uh, basically, if I'm redrawing that. See, see, see these levels that are working, very often, on the uh, the round numbers and the 50 levels. <clears throat> so I hope this. Uh, people are hope people are finding these examples useful. Um, yeah, people are hearing me, so that's good. <clears throat> Let's mix it up from the pound a little bit. Let's look at WTI. <clears throat> Obviously, particularly interesting. We're getting massive rally in um, uh, in crude at the moment. <clears throat> And uh, those who follow the, the weekend video will pretty much have seen me pointing to this as um, as not only a long-term trend line, but um, resistance levels have been breaking. You know, I've been feeling positive on crude, and uh, it's one of those examples where it's been panning out. So going to uh, across to a weekly chart, <clears throat> we're obviously at pretty massive levels here. So there's there's the high there. But we could also maybe include some of those, some of those internal levels, and say this is a pretty significant zone that we've entered into in WTI. Um, but at the end of the day, we've got those two levels. But ultimately, what are what's the level we're looking at here on this longer-term weekly basis? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, you guessed it, 55. So we're right into challenging 55 at the moment. So at the moment, you know, of course the market's looking strong at the moment, but you know, and I have my reasons fundamentally to think that actually maybe we could be entering a, a period in which the market starts to, to to break out. Actually, odds on at the moment are that the market uh, holds at these levels because we're basically in a range. Um, so if we look back in time. Here we had the rally off the lows. We hit the resistance from this this peak here. Pull back. Uh, this here was the rally, the pullback, the rally. That resistance became support thereabouts, right? We didn't get down to even this last support level here. We rallied off from there, and we started to consolidating. This peak here became resistance for a while. Um, maybe we're going to use this at this point in time. This was resistance. We chopped around above that resistance level for a while, but then we dropped through, and the market 
turned lower and it was taking out the support levels, but ultimately it didn't, my, the point being is it didn't touch here and rally off to show real signs of strength. It, it fell back through that old resistance and eventually came back and tested the support. Um, tested that support, which is a good sign versus this support. So the, you know, the, the size of the range has shifted higher a bit. Again, think these things aren't perfect. You can see it's, you're referencing this old resistance here. So see how the market has found this? As, uh, this is our little resistance point. Broken through, come back. We've basically done a false break through the low here. And then it's this level that's been holding more consistently since. So basically the point being that what are we, from the support and resistance are telling us that on a weekly basis, um, we're hitting resistances and we're hitting uh, supports. Uh, we're not breaking either of them really, yet, not convincingly anyway. So now on a, on a daily basis, you know, the trend is still looking good. If we go back through time, here's the rally off the long-term level. We run into this as resistant to market pulls back, doesn't go all the way back to the support, comes back up, finds some resistance again, but uses short-term support <coughs> instead of this big longer-term level of support. So basically pulls back about 50%. Then we get the break. Market rallies up, comes back. You know, this level doesn't really hold perfectly. So if you had, uh, if you were looking for market strength here, you know, it's one of those instances where this, you can see the level's important, but there isn't quite the energy to send it higher. Market rolls over again and basically comes back to that support level again, thereabouts but does hold. And then we got signs of strength here on this, this daily move. Um, and so perhaps if you're conservative, you wait for a break of the resistance, get a pull back, um, and it doesn't go back as far as support. We get a rally up again through the resistance. And then this is our main points that we're looking at here. We get a rally up through there, comes back, doesn't really hold the support that nicely, but it basically holds on to this one instead, not this big level, but this level holds. We're up through there. Now the main support we're looking for all from on a daily basis, basically this spike high, which is basically 53, or maybe just a little bit lower down here, which is 52, 52.5 uh, is the more conservative level that I'd say the market's kind of looking for. So if we do get a pullback from 55, um, if the structure of this uptrend is going to continue, <coughs> excuse me, and um, we aren't going to get the break to the top side. Uh, so if we aren't going to get a um, the, the top of the range holding at 55, then actually 52, 50 should hold. And even if 55 does eventually hold as a um, uh, as as the long-term resistance in this range, you know, keeping in mind this daily uh, weekly chart that we're in. You know, if this does hold, which there's a, it's a big level, it's a big round number, there's a good chance it does. Even if it does, there's quite a good chance there'll be enough short-term buyers interested in buying the pullback to the old resistance turn support to send the market some way up towards 55, maybe as far as 54. Um, yeah, I've got a question here just from David referencing the 50% pullback. <clears throat> I don't want to confuse the issue too much in this webinar, but you'll notice that a lot of the time when you're rallying up and you're breaking a resistance level, if you're coming back and retesting the old resistance, oftentimes that's about a 50% pullback. Um, and sometimes when the break has not been that significant, where you only kind of just nudged past the old high, <coughs> but the market still is taking out, it is still making new highs and you still feel good about the trend, maybe the old, the old high is not a good example, uh, sorry, a good entry point, but actually a 50% pullback is the more kind of conservative entry, entry point. So I don't know if there's a good example here. Um, let's see, let's have a look on the weekly, weekly chart. Um, Maybe something like here, is this going to, I haven't even planned this, but let's see if, kind of cherry picking a little bit here, but nature of the beast with um, webinars. 
Oi, we have so many fib levels. Ay, ay, ay. Is this even going to work out? Player's default. So I have a nice orange on my fibs. Oh, it doesn't quite pan out. But here you saw a break of the highs. Pushed into a new high, but not that convincingly. And we actually got through the 50% level. But here's one of those examples where it's probably the 61.8 there, actually. There, so actually it was the 61.8 in this, in this. So this zone is obviously always a key pullback level, and that was where the market rallied from. Not the old high, because... And again, this is just something that comes with like a lot of screen time and experience. The breakout wasn't that. If you pushed right up here, you know, and that was a 50% pullback to the high, then the two combined to be a very solid support. In this case, you know, not a very convincing breakout. And actually, that those old highs weren't the best level. In fact, it was the 50%, 61.8% that that held. Um, I do use moving averages as well. <clears throat> Uh, is another question. I use moving averages um, mainly um, as uh, just a reminder as to the direction of the trend. Um, so just one of those simple things, really, just to sort of um, tell yourself when you when you're feeling like a, a trade looks good. You know, if you're looking for a short entry, but then if I'm above the 20-day moving average when I'm looking for a, a, um, a short entry trade. I quickly stop myself. That's just my own rule that I don't like to be short in the market above a 20-day moving average. Um, obviously, there's plenty of opportunities for that to work, but it's just a rule I have in place. I want to be in the direction of the trend. And a trend for me is up while we're, uh, very broadly speaking, with other factors considered, when we're above the 20-day moving average. I don't tend to use moving average as support and resistance in of itself, but hey, if you're looking at a, a big round number, potentially, potentially you've laid a Fibonacci on top as well, um, and it's an old high or low, and it's a um, you know, and the moving average comes down through there as well, then uh, you know more the merrier in terms of confluence of reasons to believe that particular support resistance level is going to hold. So there were a few more charts out there that um, I could have looked into. <clears throat> But we've hit the hour mark now, so I'm sure a lot of you are looking to uh, get back from your lunch break. Um, obviously, it was half an hour of kind of key webinar and, and half an hour of looking for examples. I hope they were useful. And obviously, for more up-to-date analysis, you know, check, it out, check out the Monday webinar or at least the recording of it if you're not um, able to attend it live for a bit more of this happening on a, on a kind of regular basis, sometimes on a short-term basis as well. So maybe I'll give you a quick, <coughs> a quick way from the webinar. Thank you again, everyone, for attending. I really appreciate your presence. The questions made it a lot more interesting. The examples certainly good to look at those again. It's a good refresher for me to to clean out the charts, and it's something I recommend for everyone to do sometimes. Just you know, make clean out the charts. Just put on the support and resistance levels. Get a feeling for what's happening. Then layer on some of the other things to help you finesse what you're doing. All right. Thank you again, everyone. Uh, Good luck trading for the rest of the week. Let's see if the Bank of England raise rates and uh, see what happens to the pound. Cheers. Just signing out.